Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. Dr. Arlen Castle joining us here again today live on the podcast and on the Zoomcast. And uh, the name of our company is Castle of Knowledge. That's castleofknowledge.com. As divorce coach, uh, she's here helping so many people get through this and to help boost that self-confidence. And again, individually, get your life back on track. She's here to help. How are you today? Hi, Jill. Doing well. How are you today? Good to um, see you. Same here. Great to see you as well. Uh, please tell us a little bit about yourself and company before we dive into things. Okay. Hi, everyone. I'm, I'm Dr. Arlen from A Council of Knowledge, LLC. I'm a life coach with a program for those individuals that are going through divorce, dealing with the emotional roller coasters of um, trying to get their life back. So I have a program called There Really Is Life After Divorce where we mentor clients and help them through the process, hold them um, step by step and so that they can rediscover their value, reconnect with who they are and love life again. Well, we are excited to have you here and looking forward to the conversation for today. What did you have in mind specifically for us, if you don't mind sharing? Um, I just wanted to talk about a couple of things um, that uh, that I have been working with with my clients recently, such as sometimes people ask me and my clients when they first come aboard, they ask me, how do I deal with all these emotions that I'm going through? I'm going through so many emotions and how do I compartmentalize? Is that what I'm supposed to do? How do I deal with them? So I basically tell people that after separation or divorce, there are a myriad of feelings and emotions that's experienced simultaneously almost. Um, for instance, Jill, a person can go from being angry, sad, frustrated, feeling betrayed, being confused, um, and even feeling like a failure and so much more. So this can literally be all day, every day. And many times what happens is the individual entrench themselves yeah. in their job and their responsibilities or in their children but they're not dealing with these feelings. So what happens is it prolongs um, the feelings. So inevitably there's uh, consequences. So for instance, they can't think properly at work. They're making little tiny mistakes, which you know, I'm sure managers at some point is asking what is going on with them. So suppressing the emotions, they can result also in ulcers, depression, irritability, um, and just being emotionally drained. So what I typically do is tell individuals that they have to deal with these emotions. It is not easy. Yeah. It is very hurtful. And it's and it's it's just a hard thing. So and it usually happens because our subconscious mind, Jill, it holds on to those hurtful feelings, right? It just holds on. So it's swimming in the ground in their minds over and over again, like being ever present. Um, so that person is not as keen. And sometimes you can see it in their face and sometimes you cannot, because yeah. as you know, a person can have a very, a very lovely, huge smile, but be suffering in silence. So once what we do is we help the individual um, by giving them exercises and tools and how to work with those emotions, how to deal with those emotions is so many tears that come about is so many I mean, we have men that cry from these exercises, but it's but it's okay because men are men, men are people, right? Just like women are people. Um, so as I mentioned before, I think that that emotional pain can sometimes become physical pain. And um, it only happens when the individual isn't dealing with or aren't um, handling those emotions. So it becomes overwhelming. And for any listeners that's going through this, and I know that you're mentally tired and mentally exhausted. However, um, you have to muster up the energy to get the strength to move through these feelings, to allow yourself to get better, because it definitely takes energy to engage in a healing process. So yeah. that's kind of how you would deal with the myriad of emotions that you feel. And sometimes it feels like they're never going to end. It does. I, I've gone through it. It feels like it's never going to end. But it does end once you start to actually, you know, get a rhythm of how to combat them, how to deal with them. And dealing with them is not just saying, oh, I feel sad right now. <laughs> you know, oh, I feel angry right now. It's, it's, it's an actual process. Yeah. Well, you know, I also, by the way, just let you know, I do have your notes about the emotions, but a lot of times it happens in this process. We start talking, we start telling everyone 
what are your thoughts on that? Because I, I you know, it, it's good to talk to some people, but some people it's not good to talk to. What is your take on that? I think that, um, the hurting person can tell whoever they want to tell, right? Whoever they think will support them, the family and friends that would be there for them and hear them out. But what they have to understand is that sometimes after a while, that supportive network that you have will say to you, you need to just get over it. Or, you know, it's, it's been a long time now. I don't understand why you're still feeling this way. And that's, that's frustrating. Yeah. Um, when that, and when that, and it does happen. So what happens then a person feels like they don't have anyone to talk to and have anyone to talk to. They feel alone. And then that leads into loneliness. Loneliness is, it's not a good place to be. Um, and when they have that loneliness, they start living in their head, right? They start living in their head, which can take them to a dark place and a dark hole. They don't want to do that. So in a nutshell, you know, tell who, Tell the people who you want to tell, who you think will be able to listen and support you, you know, to the extent that they can. But just keep in mind that they may not be able to understand it as you're going through it, right? Unless you actually have gone through a separation or divorce and have been that hurting person. I'm telling you, I, I went to ther therapy and my therapist was good, but I did ask her at some point if she had gone through um, divorce and she said no but you know from from a theoretical perspective she had all the answers and she allowed me to speak so absolutely go to therapy but there's so much more than that you know now my therapist would never tell me to get over it but it just was constantly talking about which end up being almost the same thing so I had to come up with ways to like what do I do who do I tell how do I tell people yeah. do I just want to tell people because they don't understand um, but just just keep in mind that you do want to explain this to people. You do want to get some support. But at the end of the day, you may want to think about getting a mentor or a coach who can hold your hand through this process and help you thrive forward. Beautiful. All right. So also, it's obviously good to have a professional to talk to. I just was talking to people that we know sometimes are too judgmental. It's a little, yep. little different. Um, how do you make sure your kids get a fair deal in the court system as well? Could you share your experience with that? Because kids are always yes. involved and you want to make yes. sure things are fair for them. Yes, absolutely. So co-parenting is like the next chapter in after separation or divorce, right? So it's imperative that the parents co-parent with the focus on the children. So sometimes there's these there's these issues and challenges that the parents are going through, and that sometimes takes deference over little Johnny over here who really needs his mom and daddy, or who can hear everything that they're saying and it's affecting them. So what I did was um, when I was going through divorce, we did have some challenges, and sometimes I'm sure he wasn't feeling me, and sometimes I wasn't feeling him, but guess what? We decided that we wanted our children to come out of this thing whole. Yeah. We didn't know what that looked like, but all we knew was when it came to our children, we were going to put them first, and we did a really good job with it. It, it was it, it was fantastic. Our kids to this day are nice. They're grown now. Um, but what I did was as a result, because it worked and as I was working it, I helped yeah. some of my other friends who were going through divorce before I started getting clients. So I wrote a book about it. I wrote a book about um, secrets and principles of effective co-parenting, mom, dad, what about me? And what it does is it discusses strategies to co-parent after separation and divorce. And it includes, you know, coming up with a plan, um, how the parents can work together, because there's a lot of different things you have to discuss. Who's going to, who's going to cover medical insurance? Who's going to cover the kids on, on taxes? You know, who, how, how are we going to do vacations and what about schooling and pickups and drop offs. But when you are doing that with the focus on when the divorce is over and now you're co-parenting, do not talk about your, your former spouse to this child in a negative manner. Do not, you know, say, because the kids are going to ask, yeah. why did you guys get divorced? They're going to ask that. And I usually tell my clients to say, you know, mommy and daddy were going through some issues that we could not, um, we could not resolve. So we decided that it was better if we're not together anymore. No, they don't need to know anything else. <laughs> don't stop blaming. And I'm telling you, so the kids understand that. And you tell the kids, Mommy loves you very much. Daddy loves you very much. We both love you very much. And, you know, you're going to be in, our, in all our lives. We're going to be together. Don't worry about it. So sometimes what kids do, though, they want the mom and dad to get back together only because that's what they were used to. Yeah. 
So that that's a tricky part right there. So you just have to say, listen, mommy and daddy aren't together anymore. But what we were able to do, and many people aren't able to do this, we were able to do some birthdays, you know, later on, some birthdays, but but we still tell the child, so yeah. listen, when you get your dad, you know, your dad is going to have some things for you. You live there while you're with there. We did like every other week. And when you're with me, this is what we do. And so they got, they get used to it because yeah. kids are resilient. Kids are resilient. So long as you don't talk about the other person, because if you do that or keep the um, child away, they become resilient because they do grow up at some point, Jill, right? So yeah. you, you want to be able to discuss and keep in mind that now it's all about the child. It's no longer about you. You need to go on, get you some counseling, get your mentor, get your life together. But right now, these children need both of you. Yeah, it's so true. It always gets so convoluted and hard with the kids and you want to try to keep them neutral, but sometimes it's easier said than done, but we have to remind ourselves it really is about them and their best well-being in mind. Um, and yes. how do you start to feel like yourself again? Um, <laughs> This is not always easy how to feel like yourself again, because you don't really know who yourself mm -hmm. is. Sure. <laughs> who, who am I now? Um, and, and even if you've been married for a year or you've just been together for a long time, living together, and now you're separated, it's like a divorce, right? So you're used to doing everything with that person, you know, considering that person, considering that that family household before you made any um, huge decisions. Um, so finding yourself includes remembering who you were before marriage. You were a whole person <laughs> before marriage. And, and as well as any person developments that you engaged in doing marriage, mm -hmm. um, you had likes, you had, you had ambitions, but during marriage, you know, as a husband or wife, you weren't able to engage in those. So what happens is because during marriage, the choices were based upon what the family wanted, what was best for the family in terms of if you need to invest money, if you need to invest time, what that looked like for the family. Um, so now what you have to do is think about, okay, so what did I like beforehand? What do I really like? Notwithstanding what we like. And what my program does, my mentorship program, we help you to rediscover you. Right. Because sometimes there may be some things that you like and you didn't even know you like. So we go through a lot of different exercises. We have homework and it's not like being a student, but it is homework, because the thing is, the only way our mentorship program can work. And first of all, we only choose those that we know that we can 100 percent help, yeah. but they have to be committed. Right. Like we're going to do our part. We're going to check in with you. We're going to hold your hand. But we need you to do your homework. So we're going to come back and talk about everything. And it's been very, very successful in helping people to find themselves again and rediscover who they are. Wonderful. And we've got to remind everyone who we're talking to. We've been on a roll. Just remind us the best form in all forms of contact, please. Okay. Hi, I'm Dr. Arlen. Um, that's A-R-L-A-Y-N. My company is A Castle of Knowledge, LLC, um, castleofknowledge.com. And if you ever want to call us, we, it's 818-276-6199. And we have a, um, there is Life After Divorce Mentorship Program. If you're going through any of the things I'm talking about and more. Perfect. Thank you for sharing. Also, um, Dr. Arlen, want to ask about what about finding your identity um, and how do we forgive ourselves? There's so much to the equation of us still, you know, define yourself again, kind of similar, but yeah. to find that identity, what would you recommend? Um, I think finding that identity is very similar to finding yourself, right? Because you can't find your identity until you know who you are. So we have, as, as I mentioned before, you think about who you were before, what you liked before, um, what you wanted to do before. And then even during marriage, there's some things that came up and there's some personal development that you you engaged in that you still want to, it's still part of you, you without your former spouse. And that's kind of, kind of how you identify with, okay, well, I do like this. I know I, I, at one point I didn't think I liked it, but I think I do like roller skating after all. Yeah. I think I do like hiking. I know my spouse didn't like hiking, so I just didn't do it. But you know what? I actually do like hiking. So you kind of find your identity in who you are with what what, what you're bringing to the table, like all of you. And it's more than just things. 
right? It's more than just things. It's really who you are inside, who you are as a person, like um, in terms of what encourages you, like, yeah. do you like to serve? Who are you spiritually? That type of yeah. thing. So all of that kind of comes about once you, you have to kind of break through to get to this though, Jill. It's not, okay, I remember I like doing this. I like planting trees. It, it, this breaking down some barriers that are, that are in your head that's just kind of stuck there. So we break down those barriers and, and I'm telling you, breaking them down, people... At some point, they have an aha moment. Like, oh yeah, this is what I, I, I do. This is part of me. I didn't. I thought I didn't like that. I thought I thought I didn't want to engage in that type of thing. So, um, finding your identity is a is a combination of finding out what you like and what you desire, and who you are spiritually, who you are mentally, who you are as yourself. So yeah, we. Um, it, it's it's kind of. Um, hand in hand, it goes hand in hand. Because once you yeah. find out who, you, once you find yourself again, then your identity, you know, tends to evolve. Got so, it. Yeah. And then, you know, what about forgiving yourself? When does that happen? How do you work through that with someone? Because that's we always blame ourselves. We feel guilty and guilty for our children and the actions and what we did and what we could have done, should have done, would have done. What would you say to that? <laughs> right? You answered the question, Jill. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay. You're absolutely right. So I think before we talked about how to forgive your former spouse, um, it is so important also to forgive yourself. Like there's usually this gnawing sensation of feeling like a failure. Like yeah. I failed myself. I failed my marriage. I failed my children. I failed my spouse. And it's usually because your mind is saturated with the what ifs, you know, such as I wonder if I would have said this, or I wonder if I would have done that. But the reality is, Jill, when someone changes and is no longer interested or invested in the relationship or the marriage, their mind is made up. There you, you know, there's nothing much you can really do. But your mind still continues to wonder, you know, because a lot of times you still love them. And a lot of times you your dreams were shattered. You wanted to death do us part. And you thought that the person wanted the same thing. So now you have to forgive yourself. Forgive yourself for staying longer. When you continue to see red flags, forgive yourself for staying longer when they did not want to pursue couples counseling, right? Yeah. Forgive yourself for for thinking that that one argument is the reason why they want to go. It's not that one argument. That one argument could be the excuse, but that one argument for the most part was a buildup of many things. So the bottom line is that you did your best the way you knew how. So if your spouse cheated a few times, they wanted to cheat a few times. Right. If they decide they didn't want to be with you for whatever reason, as devastating as it feels, they want to move on. So you have to be OK with the fact that, yes, I did see those red flags and I ignore them. Um, I ignore them and maybe I shouldn't have ignored them. So uh, I feel like a fool. I should have just made a decision. Right. Sometimes we say, no, why didn't I do this? So you feel bad. But but just understand that. Forgive yourself. Extend yourself some grace um, is sometimes so hard to do because the person becomes so first they're angry with the, with the sp ex, the former spouse then they become so angry with themselves um for not going with their first mind or something like that or not listening to the red flags but um so what we do in our mentorship program we have tools that our clients use um that we walk them through how to forgive yourself and it's exercises that yeah. we do and it's it's kind of hard because people really beat themselves up, Jill. They beat themselves yeah. up. Um, but we, they have to understand that at the end of the day, the reason why you ignored those red flags, because you thought that they were, they would not continue all the time, right? You thought that at some point they would want to go to counseling or at some point they would want to sit down with you and discuss how we can be better as a, as a couple, but it just doesn't happen. So then you're like, why did I wait? Why didn't I just do it? It's totally fine. So Aww. that's kind of how what happens during that time. Oh my goodness! Well, thank you for sharing that. Also, uh, Dr. Arlen, don't forget uh, Castle Castle of Knowledge com. You can reach out to her there. Uh, we still got time left in the show. Let's talk a little bit about um, the divorce process because a lot of times it does kind of go south or take a toxic turn, as you say. What yeah. do we start to do then? So. The divorce um, takes a toxic turn sometimes. And when that happens, um, it can be unhealthy emotionally. Yeah. 
and it can be ongoing. So when this happens, it can result in bigger problems. A hurting person should dil diligently just try to continue to stay grounded in your purpose of getting through this divorce, you know, um, and starting your healing process. That is so hard to do <laughs> because sometimes arguments ensue and it's and you're so angry and they're angry and they have no reason to be angry, but they're just angry because you're angry and you're, you're arguing, but you really have to just say, okay, self, self, yeah. get through this divorce. Just, just, it's okay. Get through this divorce, take care of your children and get ready to start your healing process mm -hmm. and understand that, um, it could be easy to get angry and react to your former spouse, but just really, really, really try not to do it. If you do it once or twice, okay, but just remember going forward to try not to do it because engaging in this negativity with your former spouse can literally take you backwards in your healing journey. Yeah. You don't want to go backwards, right? So um, we usually provide our clients with pathways to thrive through this if it happens because it has happened, I would say I have... At this point, maybe 60 clients and the toxic term has happened in about 20 for about 20 of the clients. That's a lot to me. That's a lot. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Well, but thank you for sharing this and always a pleasure having you here. Uh, still, we have more time to talk about what about uh, we dwell on the bad. We dwell on the negative. We dwell on the past. Right. Mm -hmm. Why can't we only remember the bad things? How do we remember the positive? There was the good. There was the love. Right. Yeah. So you know what happens a lot. So one reason why like, the hurting person is hurting because a lot of times they do remember the good things like, oh, I remember we because there's so many good things. Most times it was more good things than bad. There was some because it's been, you know, a lot of times. So I remember all these good things. And so they get they kind of get stuck there. Then as the healing process starts then they remember the bad things and they become really angry and then they remember the good and the bad and and yeah. you can't sleep at night you can't sleep at night because the good is here the bad is here they melt together Whew. so in time in in time you know once you actually start your real healing process the healing process is not um just well, i'm gonna get over this and you will you will get over it in time. You absolutely can. If you never seek therapy, if you never seek a mentor, you can. But please go to therapy. Please, please help yourself to help yourself so that you don't take this into your next relationship. But um, it's all a part of the healing journey, um, uh, uh, Jill. It really is. It's part of it. it is. And yeah, yeah and, and what happens is that um, once you get to the point of truly, truly acknowledging and accepting that the relationship is over. Mm -hmm. I can truly, not just saying it, but literally I, I acknowledge this and I'm going to now accept it. That's one of the first steps that you can really start to move forward. Yeah. Not easy to get there either. No, um, that word, that word stuck is, is a real thing. Being stuck is really a real thing and, and acknowledging it because the dreams were shadowed. You really wanted to, when you married this person, you wanted to stay with them. You wanted to work things out. And the fact that you, you either had to file for divorce because of what's going on, or they filed for divorce and you had no idea that they were going to file. They decided to move on. Either way, it's, it's, it's a very difficult thing. So we, you know, we um, help the hurting divorcees heal, move on and take their life back with our program. I wanted to mention um, someone asked me, who, what type of clients do we see? <clears throat> Excuse me. Who are the people that join our client, join our program? And actually it's, it's a, it's any person of any gender that either filed for divorce or didn't file for divorce, okay. and even the person that caused the divorce. So I want to just tell you a quick story. If we have two minutes of someone who caused the divorce, this is, this was interesting because People typically think that the person who caused the divorce, and this guy said that he actually caused it. So it's not something that I'm saying. This is what he said. Um, but he became my client because uh, he he was divorced for two years. He was married for 25 years. I'm going to call him John. Okay. And um, after getting to the root of John's pain, he was very sad and he felt guilty and stuck. Mm -hmm. So he disclosed that he had cheated on his wife numerous times mm -hmm. with the same person. And when the wife found out, she filed for divorce. His only goal, because I asked him, I asked my clients, what are your after divorce goals? His only goal was to get his wife back. Oh. Well, his his wife had moved on. Yeah. Um, so 
before the mentorship program, I advised John, I said, John, our program will help you to heal and move on, mm -hmm. but it will not help you to get your wife back. So yeah. let's talk about that. I want you to join only if I can really help you 100%. So he said he needed to join anyway because, you know, he was dealing with the hurt that he caused her. He was feeling guilty. He was losing the love of his life. He lost the love of his life. And he, he didn't know like who he was without her because they were married for 25 oh, years. Yeah. And let me tell you, John thrived. So first we worked on his mindset. That was very important. Worked on his mindset. He intended every session, every group call, every one-on-one -on -one call, you know, when appropriate. So some of his transformation included, he was able to forgive himself for hurting his former wife. And this guy was, he was so, his guilt, I never, I was crying. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he made me cry sometimes. But he was able to forgive himself for hurting his former wife. Um, his guilt slowly diminished and he realized that his insecurities had a lot to do with him cheating. He started focusing on himself um, and was offered uh, like a new job, a new lucrative job. He became spiritually stronger and dedicated more, more of his time to helping and serving others. And his life became more joyful and fulfilled. And every now and then my clients keep in touch and tell me how they are. And this one, this was really one of the first clients. This was early on that I had who said that they caused it, right? He said, I caused it. This is what I did. And he didn't want to tell anyone. Like his wife was telling everyone, but he was ashamed and everything. Yeah. But he, he came out of this hole. So I, I'm really, I, I was really, really happy about his transformation because he did some bad things, but he, you know, he acknowledged it. He, he apologized to her. She had gone on with her life. And I think at some point they became Friend, associates, I don't know if they're friends, but associates where they can have a conversation, right? Like he would see her somewhere and he would say, hi, how are you doing? I think that's a good thing. Yeah. And I told them, just understand, at least she's speaking to you, you know? So true. Oh, okay, yeah. Dr. Owen, I apologize. We are out of time. Quickly, okay. we got to tell us the website before we go. Okay, uh, castleofknowledge.com, 818-276-6199, a castle of knowledge. LLC. Thank you so much. Thank Jill. you so topic. much. Great topics today. Thank you. Have a great day. Are you looking for even more of the podcasts and hosts that you love? The Podcast Business News Network is proud to announce that you now have even more ways to listen live. Check out the MyTuner Radio, Online Radio Box, and Simple Radio apps on iOS and Android, or find us online. Search for Business News Network on MyTuner-Radio.com, or search Podcast Business News Network on Streama.com and OnlineRadioBox.com slash US. Take your podcast on the go and don't miss a minute of the action. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. For nearly 2,000 severely injured veterans, everyday life has become filled with barriers. Day-to-day -day simple tasks can become pretty daunting. I have to carry my chair up two flights of steps or have somebody do it for me. What scares me the most is just the falling. When I'm struggling with my house, I think, you know, to have that one great barrier just knocked down, I mean, it's... It's crucial. Home for Our Troops is a wonderful nonprofit that builds a mortgage free, fully adaptive, handicap accessible house, and there's no catch. It'll be our very first home that we've ever owned. This is a game changer. This is where your life begins again. We need you to join us in completing this important mission. Please visit hfotusa.org and help build homes and rebuild lives. Because of you, everything's it's going to be okay.